What's up, guys? Welcome back to Pound for Pound House. Let's talk about this UFC 300 fight. Benoit Saint Denis and Dustin the Diamond Poirier. I love it, man. I love this fight. This fight is going to be a barn burner. It's going to be, I mean, it's going to be amazing, man. This I, I'm super excited for this fight. I think this fight out of because I feel like 300 is as of right now, and we're talking about this is the 11th of January. Um, I feel like UFC 300 is not really living up to you know where it needs to be, and UFC 299, man oh man, is it is it shaping up to be probably the best card so far? Um, and 300, I mean, I mean, what do you guys think? Let me know. Um, but yeah, let's jump into it. Let's talk about these guys. I'm going to give my thoughts on it and we'll, uh, you know, give you my pick. So first off is going to be Benoit Saint Denis. All right. He's, uh, 28 years old. So he's young, you know, that that's always a great advantage to have. Um, he's 5'11", tall always a great advantage to have especially in a lightweight uh, lightweight division <clears throat> and um he fights out of the bulgarian top team okay interesting he's from paris france calls himself the god of war um the guy is the real deal um his last fight matt Provola, which he you know which he fucking made me lose money because i was going for matt Provola, you know trying to root for a USA veteran, but whatever, shit didn't work out. Uh, that's besides the point. Um, but Matt Frivola, he KO'd him first round, which was obviously spectacular. You know, he got taken down a little bit, um, but he got right back up and he fucking, you know, did damage and did his thing. So kudos to him. Tiago, Tiago Moises, which was interesting because. I don't believe Tiago Moises was ever finished before this. So, you know, shit, hats off to him for that one. And then <clears throat> Ismail Bonfim, which to me personally, um, super promising guy. I mean, I thought he was going to be more. But then again, you know, he's also fighting an absolute demon um, of a duke, of a guy. So, um, got got submitted which was insane and then the other two fights gabriel miranda and nicolas stolzi um which are also finishes and then this was the interesting one for me where he lost his actual fight by unanimous which against dos santos and then from what i remember of this fight um he this fight should have been stopped at one point because i remember he was getting like he was getting lit up he was getting starched completely and you know that exposed the shit out of him like at that point people were like oh well you know maybe you know it was i think it was his first fight in the ufc and so whoever was like following him before that maybe probably was like hey at this point like you know he's probably not ufc caliber but he he came back with a vengeance after that he's literally you know lived up to his name the god of war after that loss but he should have probably you know been, that fight should have been stopped as a tko in my opinion um, but you know, whatever it is, what it is. But like I said, he came back with the vengeance and five fights and all finishes, nothing past the second round. I mean, hats off to him. This guy's obviously the real deal, dangerous, dangerous fighter. Um, and he looks like he's so, he's so well-rounded. Like he can just, he can strike, he can grapple, he can do whatever, Whatever, whatever it is, he could do it all. So, you know, he's he's obviously somebody that is, you know, on the rise, and he's just got a lot of momentum behind him at this point. Makes this fight that much more interesting. So let's move into Dustin, and we'll, you know, talk a little bit about him, and we'll give my predictions. Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Louisiana's own and he's obviously the veteran here he's got the, the more experience um 
I'm fighting out of American Top Team. Um, age 34, but you know, I, I mean, actually, he's going to be 35 in like eight days. So he'll be 35. He's on the wrong side for the age. Um, 5'9", a little shorter. Um, but he's a stylist thug jitsu. I mean, he's a brawler, man. This guy goes out there. I mean, he's he's just as much vicious as any of the other lightweight people, lightweight division guys. So, I mean, jumping into his record, obviously, you know, he has losses, but look who he has losses to. Uh, Justin Gaethje, the BMF, um, fucking got head kicked into a new stratosphere. But hey. Listen, he also got one on Justin Gaethje before too. So, um, Michael Chandler was a freaking crazy fight with between those two. At the end, used his thug jitsu and got it done. Um, and then Charles Dubronx Oliveira, which you know he lost to a basically one of the best lightweights to ever do it, um, champion. And then he beat Conor McGregor. Dan Hooker, he was on a good streak before before that. He obviously lost to Khabib, and um, which was also nasty because he almost had Khabib, but you know Khabib wasn't tapping. Um, so he, he he's had an amazing run, and he's obviously if you look through his resume, he's fought the best of the best. I mean, like all the way back up until whew, 2016. I mean, like, these are all, like, big names. Big names. I mean, he lost Conor McGregor, but, like, big names. Even before that, what am I saying? Like, big names. He just fought big names all the time. And this guy's obviously the real deal. He's obviously at hit the, you know, the top spot for a reason. And he's... He's just, he just, he's just well-rounded. He's just so well-rounded, which is amazing. And the only thing for me is that, is he going to be able to keep up with somebody like Benoit Saint-Denis, who is so good at, you know, bringing the, the pressure and Dustin hasn't felt his power. And, you know, obviously, likewise, he hasn't felt his and Benoit hasn't felt Dustin's power, but it's going to be interesting to see how he handles that. So moving into predictions. Before I move into the actual prediction, I want to say hatch off to Dustin for taking this fight to begin with. He didn't have to go fight Benoit Saint-Denis, who's considered right now one of the scariest guys in the lightweight division. He didn't have to do any of that. He didn't have to. He could have just waited it out. He could have waited for Connor again. He could have done so many things. You know what I mean? He just he didn't have to. He could have fought Fazeev. I feel like that would have been would have been a a more lined up match because they're both strikers. <clears throat> I mean, he could have fought others, you know, but he didn't. He went all the way to the guy everybody thinks is pretty much just boogeyman. Um, and you know, hats off to him for that. So respect to you, Dustin. That is, you know, that shows that, you know, you're you're willing to take on even the newest challenges that are coming your way. The new challenges that are coming your way, that, that shows pretty much you're not scared of that. And you're not trying to just find a way out. You're actually sitting there and just like, all right, let's, uh, you know, start up again. So kudos to you, man. Um, another thing I want to mention before I go ahead, I want to show you guys this. Me, this card is not stacked. This card is absolutely fucking bonkers. Just look at this card. I'm not even going to name every single person, but just look at some of the, the more noticeable names. Michelle Pereira, Alor Murphy, Pedro Munoz, Piotr Jan, Song Yadong, Gamrot, RDA, Chikugian, Barber, Curtis Blades, Almeida, Kevin Holland, MVP, Jack, Gilbert, Dustin, Benoit, Sean O'Malley, and Marlevera. Dude, this card is so freaking stacked. It's absolutely insane. Like, 
I think this card, like I said earlier, this card is easily right now, for now. I don't know by the time this video goes up. <clears throat> we don't know what Dana White's going to announce, but this card right now easily to me is better <clears throat> than 300. Just saying. For me, it is. But yeah, how can you not? Like, this is just an amazing card. So I just wanted to point that out to you guys. And just to add to it, it's not even finished yet. So, so I can't wait till this card is completely finished. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more to it. And I'm going to talk about each fight. Well, at least all the main card, I'll, I will we'll pretty much do a video on each each fight. Each break, each fight will get a breakdown video. So uh, keep a lookout for that. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, like this video, like right now, right now. Pause the video, just do that, and then come back. So predictions. Um, all right. Considering everything that we were talking about, I hate to say it though, but I think Benoit Saint Denis gets it done. Because even though, even though Dustin Poirier is willing to fight up, you know, and he's willing to fight these, you know, lower rank guys and, you know, show that he's still in it. I just think this guy carries insane amount of momentum and he carries a shit ton of power. See... When that fight happened with Michael Chandler, there was one point that Dustin mentioned that he almost, you know, he almost got him. <clears throat> he almost got, he almost got, you know, finished. But then he got a good read on him, and he, you know, was able to kind of like cancel out his striking and just, you know, you know, find find openings. But the thing about Benoit Saint Denis is that he, I feel like he's a guy that's gonna be. He's just he's not gonna let him get it the chance to get that opening. I think he's just gonna switch it up the moment he does. So the moment, you know, Justin gets the perfect read, he might switch up his game. Because that's like the best way to fight Dustin. Dustin is such a veteran in the game that if you don't do that and you come at him in a from a one very one dimensional style, you're gonna probably lose. Because Dustin can adjust in anything. But the thing is if you keep him guessing, if you keep adjusting, it's going to be hard. And the thing about Benoit Saint Denis is that he could fight in any style. He could fight ground, striking. Um, and like I said, the biggest thing is his momentum. He Right now, he's on a 5 5 win streak. Usually, when you see guys like that, these guys are like, you know, they, they carry a lot of momentum behind them and they're, they're, I want to say they use that as their their weapon, so, and then Dustin just came off of a sh crazy loss, getting knocked out the way he did. Um, you know that 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 makes you question everything. Is it gonna be? It, does that affect him that much? Does he become hesitant? Like, like I said before, like the same thing. But Kamaru and all these other fighters who got knocked out in a certain way will become hesitant. Did he become more weary and, you know, I don't know, like, does he, or does he go out there and fucking just brawl it like he did with Max Holloway, you know, with Dan Hooker and all the other guys? Um, I don't know, man. Like, I don't, I don't think he does that. Just like, he's 35 years old when he fights. Um, you know, he's probably, I don't think, he, I don't, I'm not saying he's going to go in there looking to be, you know, like, hey, I'm. You know, I want to get less damage, but I, I would assume that, you know, at this point, you would probably want to take less damage, right? You want to get in and out as best as fast as you can. So, I mean, if there's a path to victory for Dustin, this has to be probably the ground. Because obviously he's the more veteran in that part. I mean, he's a veteran all around, but that part of his game is, you know, not. I mean, I don't know if I don't know if Benoit doesn't ex expect that as much. I think Dustin uses the ground game, submits him. That's a big possibility. That's a way to get it done. But aside from all of that, I don't know. I don't see Benoit getting knocked out. I don't see any of that happening. I think Benoit 
wins by TKO. I don't think he obviously submits Dustin. I don't see that happening. Dustin's just really good with jiu-jitsu. His thug jiu-jitsu. Yeah, guys, that, that's that's really where, where I'm at with this. I think Benoit takes this. It sucks to say because, like, you know, I've been watching Dustin forever. And I'm obviously a huge fan. But, you know. Feels like this is going to be the time he has two losses in a row. And then he's probably going to really think about where he wants to go from there. Because I think that I think any any fighter realizes it after a certain point. We're like, hey, if I can't keep up with these young guys, then it's time to hang the gloves up. Aside from that, I mean, you know, I hope I'm wrong. Dustin, prove me wrong, man. Please. Um, but yeah. That's my thoughts on it. That's my get. That's my pick. That's my. That's what I'm going with. Um, not because I want to, because I think he's just the guy that can do it. Now, does he hold up? Like just just to kind of touch up on this. I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but does he? How does Benoit Saint Denis go up against the rest of the division? That's gonna be interesting, man. Somebody like Armand Sarukian, somebody like Islam. Somebody like Faziv, who can strike back, who can take a punch to give a punch. I mean, these people, Dustin can too, don't get me wrong. But like some of those younger guys that are, you know, built different, I want to say. And like, like, just like, just like Benoit St. Denis. Um, I think that that would be so much more interesting to me personally. I don't want to see him fight. I don't want to see him fight Justin Gaethje. I don't want to see him fight. I really don't want to see a fight Dustin Poirier either. In fact, I wish he would have fought, and I think this would have been better. I wish he would have fought Benil Dariush. That's just me. I just feel like he. I feel like he should have fought Benil Dariush. I like Benil personally, but I think ben, Benil could have got it done. I think Benil is more likely to. And once again, I hope I'm proven wrong. I hope I am. But yeah, that's my thoughts, guys. You guys, let me know what you guys think. Uh, comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Who do you got for two ninety nine? And you know, and if I'm wrong, tell me where I'm wrong. Um, let's have a conversation. I'm replying to all the comments, so let's talk about it. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like this video. Also, if you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can see all the new videos I upload.